Zechariah chapter 3. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, and Joshua has been the high priest since they returned from Babylon. He's mentioned in Nehemiah and Ezra. Standing before the angel of the Lord, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, before he was born, before he became God and before he became man. Actually, full God, full man, full man, full God. I don't mean to say that, you know, Jesus was always Jesus. I think I messed that up. <laughs> Standing before the angel of the Lord. So there's the Lord Jesus Christ. People say the Old Testament is boring. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Well, there's Satan. Always resisting. Always going against what is right. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, is the last now. Bringing us to Satan that standing at his right hand to resist him. That would point back to the angel of the Lord. You know, it's funny. You, you hear, you see on Facebook, a Christian down his knees and the devil trembles. No, he doesn't. You read what Satan did to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. Come on, fall down before me, I'll give you everything. Come on, you're really hungry, change these rocks into stone. Come on, Jesus. Trying to make Satan a pussycat. And man, he's much fierce. He's a lion. Satan has the nerve in Job 1 and 2. God, hey, you consider my servant Job? Oh, yeah, but what about if you you protected him? Remove that protection off him. We'll see how good he is. Now watch, we're not done. And the Lord said unto Satan, you know how many times in your Bible God and the devil are having a conversation? Over Job, Job 1 and 2, Zechariah, Jesus and the devil, because Jesus is God. Many other times unrecorded in the scriptures, as John tells us. And there are professing Christians out there, oh, I don't believe in Satan. What do you do here? The Lord Jehovah God, Jesus, rebuked thee. Well, when Peter loves the Lord and Jesus tells him, you know, that they're, they're going to abuse me, they're going to kill me. Jesus, I mean, Peter steps in with love and care. Right after he said, hey, upon, I'll call you Peter. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Point you to Jesus, not Peter. Peter's love for Jesus, Jesus stops, turns around, and rebukes the devil through Peter. That's exactly what's happened here. The Lord rebuked thee as he rebuked Satan through Peter. Oh, Satan. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuked thee. That's the Trinity. That's the Son, the angel of the Lord, who is God, speaking to Satan, of and for God, I rebuke thee. That's like God in Genesis, let us make man in our image. Man in Babel, let us go down there and check this thing out. Jesus, the angel of the Lord, has got the same authority that he has in the flesh. 
even the Lord Jehovah God, notice the Lord said, the Lord rebuked, even the Lord, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three times. Don't mess with the words in the Bible. That has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. That's that's a verily, verily, that's important. When God repeats something, it's important. Oh, don't you hate that? The one that's chosen Jerusalem. Well, Satan's city is Babylon. That's where they just left. Satan's city is Rome. Satan's city is Washington, D.C. Satan's city is wherever man has given himself to bow down before him. And that's to remind Satan, Jerusalem, hey, it goes right back to the Jews again. It goes right back to the Hebrews. They're God's people. Is not this, Joshua, a brand plucked out of the fire? Now, the brand was used, you put it in the fire, it had an identification mark, and you would brand the animal. It's hot. If it's been plucked out of the fire, it's going to mark. Ooh, that's thrown in Satan's face. Mark. The animals, the sheep. Now Joshua was clothed with a filthy garment. Plural. That states the condition of Judah is. Now we don't know if he's wearing the priestly garment prescribed through Moses by God. And Aaron. And stood before the angel. That's Jesus. You have at this moment right now. You have wherever this is taking place. Probably at the temple. You have Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves. Joshua. That's what Joshua means. Jehovah saved. Joshua brought Israel into the promised land. Here we have Joshua set up as the high, the high priest to set up Israel back in the land of Judah. And you've got the angel of the Lord whose name will be Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And, the, and he's got the high priest here. He's filthy. This high priest cannot do anything in that temple. The moment he steps through the first veil, never mind the second veil, never mind the third veil. The moment he'd be dead. And he answered and spake unto those that stood behind, that stood before him. So there are others there. Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, this is Jesus speaking unto Joshua, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. There's only one that can do that. I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I'm going to assume it would be the priestly garb. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. Well, the priestly garbs, Moses. By the instruction of Jehovah God, there was a royal crown, holiness to the Lord, with, with, with either a blue or purple ribbon. Was that filthy too and completely changed? 
And remember, the high priest garb, Aaron, was far more extravagant than his son. And the far more extravagant would be that one time he would put it all on and twice on the Day of Atonement enter the most holy place. One for his sins and one for the sins of the whole nation. Well, he, he was just filthy. And he took off the garments. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, says, I have... I have caused the iniquity to pass from me. No, he didn't say cleanse. He says pass, because he has not died on the cross yet. If Joshua dies right, he's going to go to Abraham's bosom. So they set a fair mitre upon his head. Now, I don't know if that's the original Because there was something about that priestly garb, if you go back, and we're not going to, but if you go back. Remember when Abihu and his brother there went into the temple and they offered the strange fire, the fire came down? Well, Moses called the family of Aaron, and he says, go get the brethren, I forget, I'm not quoting verbatim, and they took them out by their garments. <laughs> Well, they burnt to a crisp with their garments, didn't it? Almost like a Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Never once, and maybe it's taken for granted, but God tells us important things. I mean, do you realize how many times he mentions that tabernacle being built, that tabernacle being built, and Moses, the tabernacle, and the goat's hair, and the, and the, and the badger skin? You know how many times he mentions that? Mentions it more times than the birthday of Jesus. Though we count the birthday of Jesus as one of the Jewish feasts, and then it was quite often. But there's nowhere said that those clothes were ever remade because you surely were not those garments were to be holy and they're called holy garments you're not going to put a patch you're not going to have the high priest in the day of atonement walk into the most holy place and he's got patches on no way and a, and a guy went to well no they tied a rope around him and I that's foolish The only thing he had was bells. You would hear the bells ringing. But what do we do if he died in, in the whole most holy place? He's gone. <laughs> Believe me, God would clean up the mess. No one went into that most holy place to clean it, ever. And yet that blood was gone. And those garments, I don't know if they were remade, redone, if they were supernatural. But we're here we are talking about the same garbs. And we don't know if those filthy garments are the priestly warb or clothes that Joshua is wearing. And then this mitre, there was a there was a crown, a holy crown. It would be almost looking as Aaron the first time that, that Moses would direct Aaron his sons to go and do the priest. They would remove the clothes off Aaron and put the priestly garb on Aaron for the first time. This could be that case right there. Not Moses, a prophet likened unto Moses, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm throwing those things out there, but I'm not sure. And clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Now this protest is a stern warning. Usually the Bible says, and God commanded, and God commanded. So Jesus steps up. You better listen to me, brother. You got your ears on?
Because if you look at all the, the high priests in the, in, the, in the past, Joshua, and where are they now? Go all the way back to Eli. You know the entire priesthood switched from Eli to Samuel? You know there were times a high priest, they did not go into the temple. They did not do the service of the temple. And no, Joshua is not a Protestant. I'm sorry, I, re I respected the man very, very highly and all that, but we are not Protestants. Protestants are cleaned up Catholics. They got the same thing for the lackey one or two. Protest is... You better pay attention. Thus save the Lord of hosts, Jesus speaking. Okay, did you get that? If, conditional. If there's any word in the Bible that hangs Calvin by the neck of his theology that God predetermines is the word if. Because if God predetermined Joshua to be A or B, right or wrong, before the foundation of the world, God decided Joshua to be right or be wrong. Jesus the Holy Spirit would have never said if. If is a condition. If thou will walk in my ways, Jesus said, I am the way. And if condition, thou will keep my charge. It's the law. Then thou shalt also judge my house. There's the temple. And that's the house of Israel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And shall also keep my courts. There's the temple. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. And those are the people that are there. Uh, where did it mention? There were some people. Those that stood by him, verse 4. Who are they? I don't know. Higher up these or somebody in Israel. Somebody important. If, Joshua, if you do right, I'm going to put you on a sure foundation. Don't you just love that prosperity? Now let me ask you a question. The Apostle Paul, did he do right? And he went to jail many times. He was suffered persecution by the Jews, by the Gentiles, by the church. He was whipped. He was in ailments, in perils. And they say that he was beheaded. Did not Peter do right? They say Peter hung upside down on the cross and died. There's a difference between the Old Testament, the Gospels, and the church age. And when you got the prosperity gospel and, and everything would be great and humpy dory, well, I guess Paul is a backslider. Here now, remember, this is Jesus, this is God, God is Jesus. Throw the Jehovah Witnesses off in the belly of hell. When Jesus says here now, I don't know what that financial, it was that, when somebody speaks, every, no, no, when Jesus speaks, you better pay attention. 
O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, I don't know where they're at. Because there are no seats in the temple. For they are men wondered at. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what. Okay. For behold, I will bring forth this is Jesus speaking for God, verse 7. I will bring forth my servant, the branch. That's interesting. Isaiah. Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. Look at a couple of scriptures because we got the time. I'm going to raise my Bible up because my eyes are bad today. There shall come forth a rod. Hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thou. Rod out of the stem of Jesse. Ooh, ooh, that's a clue. Ding, 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 ding. And a capital B branch shall grow up out of his root. Out, out of the family tree of Jesse, there is going to be a capital B branch. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall make him quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. You know, you're, you're poor, pity you. Okay. Chapter 4. Isaiah 4. 2. In that day shall a branch, small b, of the Lord Jehovah be beautiful and glorious. Well, that's not the first coming. The first coming says in Isaiah 53, there's no beauty that we should desire in it. Okay, I get the dispensations right. Jeremiah 23. And it's, it's, I don't mean ha ha funny. Jeremiah. Let me check here. 23. I don't mean ha ha funny, but it's kind of funny. Who is saying what we're reading right now? Jesus never said he was God. In Zechariah he did. Behold, Jeremiah 23, 5, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. God speaking. I will raise unto David a righteous branch, capital B. David Koresh tried to steal that. The branch of Davidians. And a capital king shall reign and prosper. And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Gee, I wonder who that is. In his days Judah shall be saved. I wonder when that's going to be. Israel shall dwell safely. I wonder when that's going to be. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Okay. 3315 Jeremiah. Why 
Why won't people read the Bible? Don't change the Bible. Because I guarantee you, somewhere in the, in the modern Bibles, this has been changed and you lost the references. Because I got a note here that this could be uh, Zerubbabel. We're not talking about Zerubbabel. In those days, Jeremiah 33, 15, and at that time, I will cause the branch capital B of righteousness, oh gee, to grow up out of David, oh gee. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved. Well, the previous verse said Israel. Jerusalem shall dwell safely. That, with what we just read in Jeremiah, the entire state of Israel, Judah and Israel is going to be right and saved. I wonder what that's going to be. And this is the name whereby he, she, Israel, shall be called. Not Jesus, Israel. The Lord our righteousness. The land will be named after Jesus. Isn't that interesting? I guess that's when it will be holy. Back to Zechariah. Chapter 3. So, let's get this down again. See, we got to read Zechariah slowly. Verse 7. Or verse 6. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, saying, Thus saith the Lord. This says Jehovah God, which is, by the way, me. Jesus, not me. Host. Everything. All that ever to be it is. Including Satan, including his devil. If thou will walk in my ways, God's ways. That's the law. If thou will keep my charge, that's the law. Everything he said. All the commandments. Then thou shalt also judge my house. That's the temple. That's not the church house. Because you'd be quite shocked to realize in the light of the scene church aid, your church house of God Jesus Christ is standing outside, knocking on the door. Okay? Shall keep my court. That's all the different divisions outside the temple. There were different courts. There was a treasury where Jesus was a lot of the time. There was a court of the women. There was a court of different supplies. I will give thee places to walk among these. Those those guys that we just mentioned that stand by. They're standing by. It could be also Judah, the people there. Here now, O Joshua the high priest. Now, this is the great high priest speaking to the high priest. Hebrews. Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. I don't know. Can I throw something out here that I have no idea? I'm going to throw it out there, and if I'm wrong, it would be wood, hay, or stubble. And I'm probably wrong. Can I say that? I'm probably wrong. Wood, hay, or stubble. But just let me throw it out there. I know 24 elders that are seated. Nobody knows who those elders are. All right, get back to the Bible. For they are men wondered at. People wondered about those 24 elders. Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Yep, go back to the Bible. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that. For behold, I say if the Lord Jehovah God, verse 7, Jesus, who is God speaking, I will bring forth my servant, Mark. The Gospel of Mark points to the servant of Jesus Christ. Matthew is the king of Jesus Christ. Mark is the servant of Jesus Christ. John is Jehovah God, Jesus Christ. And I forget right now what Luke was. My servant, the branch. So Jesus Christ, before he's born, says, God says, 
I'm going to send a branch, his servant, my servant, and that's me. Here I am. You know how unlikely that is? But we're in a day and age in America right now, we're fighting over abortion. Do we get abortion? Do we not get abortion? Is abortion right? Is abortion wrong? Here's a baby, not ever conceived yet, saying, I'm coming. I'm God. I'm Jehovah. I'm his servant. I'm the branch. Imagine if Mary would have aborted Jesus. I got a better thing with abortion. If you are all for abortion, we'll put you in a time machine, have you go all the way back to your mother's conceiving, and we'll abort you. We'll get rid of you in the fetus of your mother. Then when we come back to the present time, we don't need to worry about your idiocy mouth. By the way, do people who, who, who are for abortion, this is extra, don't cost nothing. Do they receive birthday cards and birthday cakes and birthday presents? Do they give birthday cards, birthday cakes, birthday presents? That's kind of oxymoronic. Now, I had a preacher, you know, he doesn't do it. I don't believe in birthdays. I believe we have one birthday and that's it. And I think any Christian should celebrate anything such would be the celebration of your second birth. Okay, I said it. There it is. I'm not going to deny it. I didn't cost you nothing. For behold, okay, here we go. You know, Zachariah, woo. behold the stone. Jesus said, and the scriptures speak about the cornerstone that was rejected. Ah, uh, the rock that followed Israel. Ah, uh, upon this rock I will build my church. Ah, uh, ain't talking about no pope. They have a deliver now. What if the Pope go, goes into a coma? The church will be silent. Hallelujah. Behold, a stone that has laid before Joshua. That's the gentleman we're talking to right now. There is a stone that has been laid before him, in front of him. And we just talked about Jesus coming. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Okay, <laughs> I'm going again. And there's a place in Revelation, uh, and a place in Isaiah. I'm just going to say, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know everything. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof. I'm going to grave something on this stone with eyes. And it's going to be a graving. Like a chisel and a hammer. God. You know the last time God did that? Here, Moses. Here, here's the tablets. I'm all done writing them. Oh, Lord. You got some lighter tablets. Okay. Okay. Did you think about that? Those two tablets of stones the Bible says was engraved by God. Moses did not have a tablet stone typewriter. Wait a minute, hold on, Lord, I gotta you know, correct that. No. Saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts. I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day, second advent millennium. Wait a minute, we just talked about the servant Jesus, verse 8. Now verse 9, we move to the millennium. That's a big, long period of time. And Jesus said, a little time, I... And a little time. Lord, it's been a little, long, little time. It has been so long that even Paul wrote, I'm waiting for the Lord's coming. <laughs> it didn't happen. Until, imagine if Paul was going around, it's going to happen in my time, and it didn't. 
That land is Israel. The people, the Jews, we just read that in Isaiah and in Jeremiah. The only one's going to do that is Jesus, who is speaking to Joshua, who's speaking out of the mouth of the Father, God. I'm coming. Wow, this Bible is... You couldn't get anything better on television or the radio. In that day. Didn't we just read that somewhere tonight? Say if the Lord of hosts, that's Jehovah, shall call every man his neighbor under thy vine, great, and under the fig tree, there's the millennium. Spoken by Jesus through the Holy Spirit in the mouth of God. And he hasn't even been born yet. That's 48 prophecies fulfilled. There's a lot more prophecies yet to come. 